Section 7.1 continued. Today we're going to talk about vertical transformations for sine and cosine. Now, if we're giving these two equations right here, we have y equals a times the cosine of x plus d, and over here, y equals a times the sine of x plus d. So remember that this a value that's on the front is going to tell us whether a graph is vertically stretching or compressing, um, or if it if it's a going to be a reflection across the x-axis, and the d value is going to move or vertically shift our graph up or down. So for this, the absolute value of a, if it's greater than zero, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of a. If it's in between zero and one, then it's a compression. And if it's less than zero, then we know it's a reflection across the x-axis. The amplitude, remember, is half the height of the graph um, or half the distance and remember distance is always a positive value so that's why the amplitude says the absolute value of a to find given a graph you're going to take your maximum minus your minimum and divide it by two your vertical shift up d units if it's positive down if it's negative and to find given a graph you can do your maximum plus your minimum divided by two so for this first problem right here it says graph um, y equals the sine of x plus 2 from 0 to 2 pi. So on this interval, that means we just want the first um, wave of our sine graph. Now when I'm graphing these, remember you always want to use your key points and label everything on the x-axis and the y-axis as well. So remember the period um, for our functions right now is 2 pi because we're not going to change them just yet. And so remember to find the key points, you take your period and divide it into four equal point parts. So your key points are in this case going to be 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little table over here just to show you guys. So we have x and then the sine of x plus 2. So remember, your key points are going to start at 0 because we want our interval from 0 to 2 pi, so 0. And then we have pi over 2, because that's what my key points are going by, equal intervals of pi over 2. And then another pi over 2 is pi, and then another pi over 2 would be 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So when I plug 0 into the sine of x, the sine of 0 is 0, and then we're moving it up 2, so this would be 2. And then the sine of pi over 2 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. The sine of pi is 0 plus 2 would give me 2. Um, so the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 plus 2 would give me 1. And then I have the sine of 2 pi, which is 0 plus 2, is 2. So for this, I'm going to draw my um, axes first, so I'm going to label them. So this is um, pi over 2 right here would be pi. This is 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and I'm also going to label backwards. So negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now for this, I'm going to start by graphing my parent graph. So parent graph for sine starts at 0, goes to 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So there's my parent function. So I um, can use my table to help me, or I can just count from my graph, move this whole thing up to, so all these values have been moved up to, so this would be the new transformed graph. Um, of course, these graphs go on forever, but we would just want the interval from 0 to 2 pi, so that's why I'm going to leave it like that. And you can even notice that um, right here, this is where we vertically shift our new um, graph up to. And if you look, you can see the amplitude, which is half um, the distance between the max and min, so the amplitude is still 1. Um, and then you can also look down here to see that. So all we did was move our graph up to 2. So now let's look at the graph of y equals the cosine of x minus 2. So for this one, we're doing the same thing, except for we're using cosine first. So if you want, you can make yourself um, a table. So we have x and then cosine x minus 2. So this one, remember the period is 2 pi, so the key points are going to be going by pi over 2 as well and start with 0. So we have 0 and then pi over 2, pi, 
3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And remember, when I'm talking about the key points, I mean the intercepts and the maximum and minimum points. So the cosine of 0 is 1, and then 1 minus 2 gives me negative 1, and then I'm going to keep on going. So the cosine of pi over 2 um, gives me a value of 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The cosine of pi would be equal to a value of um, negative 1, so negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and then we would get negative 2 and negative 1 if we continue. So I'm going to label my axes first. So we have pi over 2, um, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. This would be negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. Now, for right now, the key points um, aren't really going to change until we start to um, do horizontal movements to our graph, which we haven't started yet. So cosine starts at a value of 1, goes to 0, negative 1, 0, and then back to 1. So this is the first wave of the parent graph, y equals the cosine of x. So we're just taking this graph and we're moving everything um, down 2. So my new axis would be right here. Sometimes it helps me to draw those in, so that's why I do that. So then for my transform graph, I'm moving everything down 2. So here, 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 and there. And so my new transform graph would be here. And so we've graphed it on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So let's look at the next one. So now we're going to look where we're doing the amplitude. So for the first one, it says graph the negative 1 half times the sine of t. And then we're going to graph 2 sine of t on the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So our period stays the same. So if you look here, remember this number in front tells us our amplitude. So I'm going to write that stuff down. So the amplitude in this case is the absolute value of negative 1 half, which is just 1 half. And then I know that there is no vertical shift. The period of my graph is still 2 pi because we're not changing that yet. So that means my key points are still going by pi over 2 intervals. And notice that the negative reflects my graph over the x-axis. So this one here, for this graph, the amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. The period, again, is still 2 pi. And um, in this case, um, your key points are still going by intervals of pi over 2. So we're going to start at 0, so 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. I'm going to do the same thing here. So you're just going to plug these values in. So for the first one, when I plug 0 in for sine, the sine of 0 is 0 times negative 1 half would be 0. When I plug in pi over 2, I get um, the sine of that would be equal to 1. So 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. Pi would be 0, 1 half, 0. And over here, the sine of 0 is 0 times 2 is 0. The sine of 1, or sine of pi over 2 is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2, 0 negative 2, and 0. So I usually like to do that because it helps me make my graph. So I'm going to graph my parent graph um, first, and then we're going to look at our transformations with it. So my parent graph would start here at 0, 1, 0. And I should label these axes. So this is, of course, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and we also need the negative direction. Because we're graphing on the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So my first wave for my parent graph, whoops. Starts there, and then remember, if we go backwards on the unit circle, it's going to look like this. So that's for y equals the sine of x. Now let's do our first transformation. So we're going to do the um, g of t in this case. So we'll do that one in red. 
So for g of t, we have um, 0 and then negative a half, which would be in here, 0, 1 half, 0. And if we continue this in the negative direction, this would be up here. So it just continues on. And notice that now the amplitude is one half, so it's half the distance from our parent graph. And if I graph um, f of t, I'll use, oops, f of t, so I'll use um, green to do this. So now we've changed our amplitude by two, so it starts at zero, two, zero, negative two, zero. And I can go backwards. So notice that we didn't change, make any horizontal changes. We just made vertical changes. And so now my amplitude of my graph, um, the distance between half the distance between the maximum endpoints would be a value of two. And again, don't forget to always label your x and y axes when you're doing this with your key points. So then the last part we're going to have to do is going to be able to go from a graph and write the equation. So there's a lot of things we want to look at when we're doing this. So notice your key points are pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Um, so I know that my key points, my period is still um, equal to 2 pi. And the key points, of course, are pi over 2 intervals. And for this, we're not changing the period just yet, so we're really working with the equation y equals a times the sine of x plus d, or y equals a times the cosine of x plus d. So you have to decide if this is a sine or a cosine graph. So in order to help us do that, we're going to look at the max and min values. So the maximum for this graph, you notice, is at 2. The minimum is at 0. So if we want to find the amplitude, remember the amplitude is the um, maximum minus the minimum divided by 2, so the absolute value of that. So 2 minus 0 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so the absolute value of 1 is 1, so the amplitude is 1. And then we can also do the vertical shift, our d value. So your vertical shift is going to be your maximum plus your minimum divided by 2. So in this case, we have... 2 plus 0 over 2, so my vertical shift is also 1, like the amplitude. So when I know my vertical shift, I usually like to draw that in because this helps me decide whether or not this is going to be a sine or a cosine graph. So now that I have my vertical shift in, I know um, I could have also found that by counting from the amplitude. So if this is the maximum and I count down um, a value of 1, I know that I get where my vertical shift is going to be, so that's another way to look at it. So for this, one wavelength is from 0 to 2 pi, which is right there. So if that's one wavelength, notice with my vertical shift, if we were to shift this um, back down to um, down 1, then it would start at 0, 0. So which one graph starts at 0, 0? Sine, so I know this is going to be a sine graph. So we have y equals our amplitude, which is 1, which we don't need to write, times the sine of x plus 1. So this is the equation for this graph. And then for the next one, we can do the same thing. So for this graph here, I'm going to first find my amplitude. So your amplitude is your maximum, which is at 1, minus your minimum, which is at negative 3, so that becomes plus 3 because it's minus the minimum, over 2. So that's 4 over 2, which is 2. Absolute value of that is 2, so I could actually just count 1, 2. So I know that I move my graph to right here, so I know there's a vertical shift um, down 1. Or I could also just figure it out by using maximum plus the minimum divided by 2. So 1 minus, so plus negative 3 divided by 2. Notice that gives me negative 1 for my vertical shift. And if you look at your graph, notice that your graph is not starting on this vertical shift, so it's not a sine graph now, it's a cosine graph. And it's not starting up, it's starting down here, which means we had a reflection over the y-axis. So for my 
or y axis, x axis. So for my um, equation, I would get y equals negative 2 times the cosine of x and then minus 1. So, and you can again look to see that your amplitude, half the distance between your max and min right here, is a value of 2. And so, just to reiterate, remember that this is one wavelength for the sine, this would be one wavelength for cosine, and notice that they're divided into four equal parts, which is why for our key points we always take the period and divide it by four. So um, that helps us a lot. So eventually we'll be horizontally making changes to our graphs um, and then we'll talk about when that changes the key points.